Hi everybody, today we're going to work on an old favorite of mine. Uh, this is a power supply out of a BenQ PE8700 projector. It was also used in a Runco CL700 and CL710. These are common, eh, common for power supply failures because of the capacitors they use. They have these uh, cheapy green capacitors in them and the symptom is it act like it? Uh, it acts like it's dead. Uh, you can plug it in. You don't hear anything. The little standby light doesn't come on. Uh, you don't even really measure any power. Uh, in fact, I'll show you. I'm going to turn this one on before we put this capacitor kit in. I actually uh, sell these capacitor kits, so if you need one, there'll be uh, a link in the description below. But I'll show you how we check this first. This is already out of the projector. Um, Assuming that if you are willing to work on this, you already know how to get it out of the projector, but if you don't, I think I have a video, and there's probably a couple other videos on how to remove these power supplies. Uh, one of the first things you need to do before you test it is you have to bypass the door interlock switch on the projector. There's a cover that has a pin that presses a switch that connects these two pins right here. What I like to do is just get a, an alligator clip. This is for my meter. And then I just go underneath and just clip it across the pins and push up the insulation so it's protected. Not leaving it on there long, just to take a, a couple readings. And then I get the meter. And let's get the meter in a frame so that you can actually see it. And then I want to ground I'm going to ground the negative lead and then we'll poke around with the positive lead. So I'll just clip that over here. Make sure I have a good ground. And let me get the uh, power cord. Whoop, pardon me. Make sure the switch on the back is off. And then you can plug in. Keep in mind when you turn that switch on, everything over here, <clears throat> actually everything on top, you should consider hot and possible high voltage depending on the uh, how bad off the power supply is. The capacitors may be partially working enough to make the uh, power factor circuit work and at the least you have normal line voltage running around. So keep that in mind. So I turn the power on. No little chirp like you usually hear. Have the uh, meter on DC. So let's check on the bridge. See that? It's trying to start. Now I'm on the wrong side to really be measuring it properly. In fact, I'll show you what I mean. There we are. But you see how that's pulsing? It's because it's trying to start and it can't. If you see that, that's one telltale sign. Another sign is when you go to check the uh, actual low voltage output with it grounded, like I show you here. Turn this so that we can see the this black connector right here. That's the low voltage output. So again, I'm going to turn it on, being careful not to touch the top, and then just go to all these. And we should have 3.3 and 5 on at least one of these, and we have nothing. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's not even pulsing. So that power supply is not trying to start at all. Pretty sure we have bad capacitors. So let's just make sure that the um, that this is charged down before we start touching anything. I'm just going to measure that, and it's dropping quick because they do have some bleed resistors. Get my clips out of the way. Definitely unplug it, and then take this out. There we are. So the next thing we need to do is 
take the power supply apart and there's just four screws on the top and then there will be two wires plugged in underneath. Most of the capacitors are on the second lower board, but this does have one. To take this board out, start to pull it away, and you'll see you have a two-pin connector here. It plugs in. That's the, uh, the 380, the high voltage that gets sent down to the next board. And then this is the line voltage in that connector here. So we unplug that. We'll do this one second because we're only changing uh, this capacitor here. That's uh, C656. It's a uh, 100, might get 25 volt. So we'll do this one last. I'm going to put that off to the side. It's also a good time to clean the fan. This one's not awful, but I'll wipe it down. To take the uh, lower board out again, it's just four more screws. Hopefully you can see that. Let's try another light, see if this helps at all. Let's try there. And it's kind of throwing a shadow. Let's. Yeah, let's see how that helps. You can kind of see. So these four screws. Now this little green mat is actually a silicon part or pot holder. I got it at Goodwill. It's fantastic for soldering on. I do surface mount work on it. It has these little things for catching pieces if they drop. So those four are out. Now the board just lifts up. This wire here, this is the fan on the back. You want to unplug that. And just carefully take the board out and we'll set the rest of the power supply casing off to the side. It's a little dusty. It needs uh, a little bit of a dusting, so I'll just I don't have an air compressor at home at the moment where I'm filming this. Well, not set up in here at least yet. There we go, I'll use my built-in canned air. I'm told it's plenty hot. All right. So, you probably don't have one of these, but if you do, use it, and if you don't, you don't need it. I'm just going to use it because I have it here and it's easier for me to do the video with it. It's a PCB holder. It has these little knobs for tightening these side arms in, and then these are spring-loaded so they can hold it, and you can rotate the board. It makes it easier to solder. You can do it right on the, you know, on a table too, but just to film this will make it easier. So the next thing we need to do is get the old capacitors out. And there's a couple ways you can do that. If you have some solder wick, that's a good way. If you have a solder pump, that's a good way. These are kind of forgiving just to be pulled out. Um, I'm still going to use some wick, but I'm going to show you a way that might be easier if, uh, if you don't have a whole lot of resources. The capacitors we're going to be changing are these guys right here, all the green ones. <coughs> the uh, <coughs> Oddly, the silver ones over here are Nichicon. They're high quality. But these are, I don't know what these are. Uh, what do they say here? Can't even read it. But they're not name brand that I know of. They must have gotten a real good deal on them. So anyway, what to do to get these out without using wick is you just kind of pull them out. Now you do need some tools. This one has that glue in between. I'm going to cut that. It'll make it easier to remove each cap by itself. Uh, the kit does come with some wick, but I'm going to show you how we're going to use that wick by doing it this way. So all I do is I heat up one leg and then just kind of pull it down and then I heat up the other leg and pull it down. And sometimes you can get it out with two heats, in this case it took three. But there you go, there's the first one out. 
that's C612. The next one we're going to take out is C634. And same thing. It really depends how much clearance you have under, or I guess on either side. Next one be by the uh, transformer here at C633. That one's out. And the last one is C607. Well, the last one on this board. We still have uh, C656 on the other board. And again, all I'm doing is heating and gently rocking the capacitor back and forth to pull the lead out. You shouldn't have to pull, it should just move. So these are all out, and the company is Lelon, L-E-L-O-N. It says they're rated at 105C. I'm dubious of that claim at best. Let's check them. Let's see, 47 at 50. Now I don't have an ESR tester in my Fluke, but I have a feeling the, uh, just checking for microfarads will be enough. So let's see that we have that in frame here. There we go. All right. So this is a 10 at 50. All right, 9.4, not awful. This is a 220 at 25, I believe. Yeah. Let's see what that. Now that'll probably be close. I, I seem to recall that one is really bad. Ah, no, that's pretty bad. It's without a load on it. About 160 microfarad, 165. <clears throat> so that's not good. That one's really bad. And I'm not going to save any of these. They're all going in the trash. Forty-four point eight on a forty-seven. It's probably also okay, but again, and four point five on a four point seven. That's not awful, but the uh, it doesn't say what the tolerance is on these. That could be out of spec. But either way, this one is definitely no good. And I think the one on this board will check out bad. So anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's move back to the kit. Let's get out the little piece of cardboard with the solder and wick wrapped around it. And you're, you need to unroll the solder first. That helps hold the wick in place. There we go, and I'm just going to lay that down right here. Eh, actually, let me make a, just a loose, loose coil with it so I can get to it. There we are. And then the wick. It's not a ton of wick, but if you use it right, you shouldn't need too much. So again, I'll unroll that, put the cardboard out of the way. Now what I'm going to, what I'm going to use the wick for is to clean these pads up now that the capacitors are out of the way. You can see it works pretty well. There's not too much solder. From the factory, so should be enough wick.
And if the wick starts to slow down on you, just cut off everything that's used. Just leave a little bit on the end because the heat starts to get absorbed by the rest of the wick and not by the pad. See? tell if they're can't tell if they're open all the way but again that's where this wick is handy because you can just it'll pop right in and if there's any solder in there it'll pull it right out Okay, you can see it just run right up the ribbon. See, this one is just fighting me. Now, sometimes what I'll do when they fight me like that is just get an old one of the components. Because the, uh, the solder gets... There we go. Just enough to push it loose. There we go. And there's still plenty left to do that other board. So we'll put that off to the side. Now let's get the new capacitors ready. So we need a 220, a 47, a 10, and a 4.7. So let's see, we have a 220, a 47, a 10, and a 4.7. And then we have a 100 for the other board. Alright, so C607 is a 220. Let's make sure that's nice and visible. This part's important. Now these are, these are polarized. There's a white dot where negative should be. In this case, negative is towards the transformer for C607. Come on. Is that solder? Not quite. Nope. There we go. And then the next one will be, let's see, C633, which is a 47 at 50. And here's a 47 at 50. Let's get it out of the paper. And this one, negative is to the right, towards R607. And then if you need to, just kind of, you know, bend the legs out a little, <clears throat> pardon me, bang that legs out a little bit. You can do that. See R634, which is a 10. Sometimes I like to just cut them off the paper. And this one negative points to the left. Like that. And the last one is what do we have here 4.7 for C612 negative points up.
Now most of the time the natural bend will hold them in place, but just keep an eye. Then you want to solder them. Whatever order works best for you is fine. All right, they're all soldered, and we can trim the leads. Always want to trim the leads. Long, long time ago, I had some long leads and put them back in a chassis and didn't realize it and it shorted out pretty spectacularly. Last thing I want to do is clean that board. Just any, you know, any flux. It's good to clean it off. Let's get some isopropyl or flux cleaner depending on what type of flux you use. good. I'm just going to wipe this stuff down. Alright, so this board is repaired, basically. That's uh, that's all you have to do. You could re-glue these back together, I guess, if you wanted to, but I don't really know what the point is. It's not like your projector is going to be bouncing around in the car very often. So let's go to the other board, and then we'll put it back together, and I'll show you how to test it. So here's the other board. This is the power factor, primary power supply, I guess you could call it. Can't remember what they call it in the service manual. Big capacitor's good. Just this little green guy right here, uh, R650, or C656. And that is, let me get this a little more centered. Oh, I see. That capacitor is blocking at the big one. So this board gets a little more warm. So I am going to use a little bit of the new solder to just kind of wet those joints. Get them ready for the wick. So let's walk that capacitor out like we did on the other ones. There we are. And then we have the wick to clean the pads. see if that same method works. Yeah, that worked. Let me cut that used stuff out of the way. And we'll do the same thing here. There we are. All right, so then our last capacitor is a 100 at 25. Again, the white dot is our negative and it's towards the back. And just push that capacitor down. Not too hard, you don't want to 
break the bottom at all. And then we will solder it. And at this point, give it a once over to make sure you don't see any questionable solder joints. Everything looks pretty good here. It did get warm at some point, but not too bad. So, we're going to trim these. And then I will wipe the board down. Deflux that, and then uh, we'll put, put it all back together and get some power to it. And I can show you what the voltages should look like on a working power supply. There we are. Get that flux out of the way. It's just any dust build up and I'm gonna clean these, just wipe these off since they help with the grounding. Alright. Let's get it out of the bracket and I'll move this back. That's not too bad. That's uh it's actually not a lot of wick, but it's enough to get it done. I did pretty good on that. Pat myself on the back. All right, so let me throw these out. These little extra leads. And we have the housing. So the little, let's see, the first thing we want to do, let's see the, let's get our fan in here fan wire. Alright, so we'll plug the fan wire back in. Uh, wrong board. Ah, that's the other board. This board. My mistake. Alright, plug the fan wire back in. It's easier to do now. And set it down. You have to work it under the wires a little bit. Kind of wobble it into place. Just make sure that fan wire doesn't get caught under the board. There we are. And the little standoffs, they will line up under the holes and they will lock the board in a position left and right. And you can put your screws back in. There's only eight screws in the entire power supply, and then there's three screws that hold it into the projector plus one ground wire screw, and that's a little bigger than the rest. So if you do not have an even amount of the same size screws, that's okay. Now the top goes back in. You can have the uh, line plug goes here. Then the high voltage feeds down to the secondary power supply. This lines up with its own tabs. You'll see there's one here, there's one here. Lines that board up. And these four screws go back in. Then we'll connect the clip like I had before to bypass the door switch. And we can connect power and start measuring things and see if it worked, if we now have a possibly functioning projector. I'll tell you what, if it's working, then we'll do the other video on putting it back together. Alright, so you want to make sure that wire is underneath where that Molex plug will be, but not blocking that plug right there. So we'll get a little bypass tool. There we are. And bring the meter back over.
All right, so that's grounded, and let me get the power cord. There we are. Let's see, power is off. Power cord goes in. Oh, I'm gonna check the uh, mains first. All right, all right, so we turned it on. No smoke, that's always a good sign. First things first, let's check. See that nice, smooth, non up and down pulsing 130 volts. That looks good. The next thing to check without the clip very, very carefully is over here. This is high voltage. See that 388.3? That's what we want. That's going down to the lower supply. So we'll put our clamp back on just to make the ground easier. Just gonna clip that in here. And then I'll tilt it and see. Can you guys see that? Alright. So bottom right zero. Oh, here we are. Twelve. Zero. Zero. Five. 3.3 or 3.4 rather and 3.3 so that's good that's what we want I believe these are all ground across the bottom yeah these are all ground but we have our power there's our 12 some of these are return pins 5 and you saw the here we are 3.4 3.3 is what it's supposed to be but there's no load so this power supply is good this power supply can now go back in the projector so if uh, if you like the video and you need one of these capacitor kits um, please uh, click the link down in the description it goes to my eBay store and you can purchase a capacitor kit or a couple other things that I have for sale occasionally there's projectors there um, and if uh, you have one of these kits or just buy the capacitors yourself, this is how you can put them in. You know, they're nothing, not super expensive or anything. So, uh, yeah, subscribe, like, dislike, dance on your head, whatever you want to do. Um, stay tuned for the next video where I will put this back in the projector. As usual, thank you for watching.